Hey all, this is Larman from Gamers Down Under. This is podcast episode three. Steve's yeah. here. Huh? Yep. Oh, I'm Steve's here, mate. Here. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the Queensland. I'm here, mate. Yep, cool. Thanks, Copper. <laughs> and we've got a guest with us tonight, one of our editors from the page, James. Yeah. Welcome. Hey, guys. Basically, what, how we normally start off, James, is we go through what we've been doing the week before. Um, so yep. you can start off. What have you been doing with gaming for the last week? Last week, finished off bidding, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Klonoa on the uh, Wii, or it actually originally came out on the PS, on the PlayStation in 97. Have you ever heard of it? No. Don't, don't think I've heard of Klonoa. Well, what's that about? No. no. Well, I'm playing the remake version. Well, I just finished it yesterday. Uh, the remake version on the Wii came out like 11 years later. It was just like a remastered version. It's a 2D platformer. It's kind of like with a 3D looking background. It's actually quite a fun game. Actually, if you have time, just check on YouTube a little trailer of it or a gameplay footage. It might be right up your alley, Michael. Okay. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. I don't even know how to actually spell it, let alone um, say it. K-L-O-N-O-A. So, yeah, check it out. Also, I recently okay. uh, finished uh, Kirby Adventures on the Wii as well. So what I've been doing is trying to go through a bit of a backlog on my Wii titles. Uh, and how many Wii games do you reckon you've got? Over 100, but of the good titles, not shovelware. Because that's what that yeah. system was pretty much known for. It's like the Atari 2600 yeah, version 2. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I think there was like... I think, oh, I'm trying to remember how many Wii titles there were. I know, I think it was about 800 off the top of my head, around there. <laughs> well, probably. Yeah. yeah. About eight of them were good. Oh, there's <laughs> a lot more <laughs> hidden in there. <laughs> Triggered. No, no, that's I must serious. admit, I did like the arm when I got a fair few uh, in my catalogue. Well, there was actually 1,529 Wii games. Massive. Hmm. But I reckon that's for all over the country. It's not actually just like Australia's releases. That'd be Japan, America, from Europe, yep. different places as well. Uh, they were just coming up with random games that made no sense whatsoever, like Lynx Crossbow Training. That was set out as a game. It's like this random chicken <laughs> game. I don't know what they were thinking. They were just throwing out anything. Yeah, no, no, no. I had a go at the Lynx Crossbow Training and. I'm mad. As, I'm a mad Zelda fan anyway. So anything with Zelda or Link in it, I have to buy it anyway. So uh, I did buy did it, and it? yeah, it was pretty wonderful. Did you get it with the gun? The actual zapper. Yeah, the zapper that's made for the Wii. Yeah, oh, good. Um, the, uh, it's sort of like a shotgun sort of thing. You hold hold it with both hands, and yeah, same sort of thing. They were going for like the NES zapper sort of look. Uh, I've still got. Still got oh, the, the original uh, white one. Yeah. Now, I, I, I actually like the Wii. The Wii was a pretty good uh, system when it first came out. Um, I think we talked a little bit about the Wii last week as well, didn't we? Um, and anything else you did this week with gaming? No, that's that's it pretty much. All I've been doing is watching YouTube, researching, just playing my games when I can. If it's not if it's not work, that's what I'm doing. Actually, before we go into that, luckily I waited for you to finish talking about it before interrupting. Uh, yeah. Why don't we just introduce yourself? Just chuck it on, since your guest speaker probably will pop up more often than most guests would actually come up. You might as well just yeah say what you because uh, obviously as some of the listeners might know me and Michael's first intro we ranted on for forty five minutes just about us pretty much. So <laughs> <laughs> yep, well you might we don't as well. Uh, minutes, mate, nah. don't worry. But just give us a heads up, like, what's your rough favourite game, favourite console, favourite genre, you know what I mean? Just so listeners know who they're listening to, I guess. Uh, well, my name's James. I uh, pretty much started gaming when I was back in 92. The first game I ever played was, like most people, was uh, Super Mario Brothers on the NES. I remember the first time I played it very vividly. I sucked at it. Like, I was only three years old. But from there, I fell in love with gaming. Later that year, I surprised Christmas present was the Super Nintendo. It came with uh, Super Mario World. 
And I couldn't stop playing that for days. I still play it. I still love the game, trying to get through all the secret worlds as well. I really haven't stopped playing games. I'm a massive collector as well. That's what I do in my free time if I've got a mass, a pretty big Super Nintendo collection. Uh, it's going at about 300 games at the moment. Oh, nice. I have to ask you, have you got Breath of Fire too? I do, actually. Um, I've got uh, Wild Guns. <laughs> Yep, now you're talking, now you're talking. Got a few games from the States as well, like I've got actual copy of Earthbound that I bought in Philadelphia. And that's uh, an original game, or that's that a That is the original game. Oh, wow. It sent you back quite a bit. <laughs> oh, it definitely did. Uh, yeah. One of the rarest games that I've got is, uh, it's called Lickle. It's for the Famicom, but it's actually known as Little Samson. <laughs> I haven't heard of it myself. It's uh, made by Taito. It was released late in the uh, NES's life cycle. Came out back yeah. in uh, when the Super Nintendo was already out. It's one of the most expensive states at the moment. It, it looks like um, I, I can remember seeing something on, I think it was on YouTube where I was watching it with the little Samson. It's sort of like a DuckTales sort of game, a side scroller sort of game. Yeah, no, you can. You have about four different characters and you can change between each character once you kind of rescue them. So you're just going along the quest and you're just trying to make it way through. There's a little Samson is a little green guy. There's flying guy. And I can't remember the names like it's written in Japanese, but it's in the box. It's got the manual and everything. It's, it's up there in price. It's a great, but the uh, Lickle is a green cartridge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played that. I, I don't think I probably will if I can't afford it, uh, depending on how much. One of the loads. next games that I have is, uh, well, recently picked it up. It was uh, the Flintstones uh, Surprise at Dinosaur Peak as well. It's also a very expensive game. It's more expensive over in the States, but it only came out in the PAL territories uh, in Italy. It costs a fair bit of money. It never actually came out in Japan. So mm. that's why the price is bumped up on that one. But... Besides collecting, play a lot of games, own most of the systems, have a fair few different games for each one of them. What I'm playing mostly at the moment, as mentioned before, is the Wii. I'm trying to get through the backlog. Got my PS4, which I play a fair bit as well. I know you're yeah. a big fan of the is it PS4, Steve. Yeah, mate, that's the one. That's the one. So you're one of them. Okay. <laughs> I've got an Xbox One as well, but I gave that to one of my friends because he's recently got a kid and he needs something to do when the kid's sleeping. <laughs> Don't catch up sleep. Catch up on sleep when the kids are asleep. You just play games instead. I like it. Exactly. Yeah. And I was waiting for Steve to say have some comment about giving away an Xbox because of that crap or something. No, nothing. Oh, I was, I was keeping that one to myself for later on. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what would you be your favorite console then favorite console uh all time would be the super nintendo and favorite game favorite game maybe That's either two in time or sunset riders actually Sunriders, all right. that's a game that i play actually a fair bit with my wife so if Thanks sunset so. riders favorite game what's favorite genre favorite genre would be probably or oh, if it's now it'd be like an action game like uncharted mm -hmm. uh but if we're going back it'd be action platformer yep 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 good call good call but like it's, it's hard to to get it you know what i mean like I, i'm i'm an rpg fan all over but like i'm more nostalgic rpg like i just don't have the time to dive into the heavy storylines and fall in love with the characters like i used to so these days it's like action rpg is a lot more appealing uh, i much prefer the action rpg as well that like for example your zelda anything that just keeps moving forward I, i'm not a big fan of turn-based games no not anymore i've with age i've gone away from them like i got uh i don't know whether you played octopath traveler no i haven't that's on the uh switch isn't it Sw switch yes it is yep. coming to pc i don't know whether they've released it yet or not but it is coming on steam it's a turn based it actually it, it won me over like i played it for a, a little while it got the usual 20 hours 30 hours out of me like most games do but not dove in but the graphics and everything it was a real play on old jrpgs pretty heavy 
but it was okay. gr- it was grindy, man. It was real. Like they said, it's going to be JRPG. You're going to have to grind, and yeah, you have to grind. That's what my mate plays the most. The RPGs, and they just take 80, 90 hours in. <laughs> I asked him months ago, he's still playing. I'm like, how do you do it? Well, they used to have a rule, like a JRPG was always, oh, 200 hours if you wanted to tr- even get anywhere near a, a 100% it. But um, yep. the, these days, I think it was White Knight Chronicles, White Knight Chronicles 2, like all them. Yeah, it's 100 hours minimum, but then the, oh, they make a bit of mockery out of us and said they had to dumb it down for the Western world, and especially, <laughs> especially America. <laughs> I think probably Queensland so, too, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's more of like anywhere from 20 to 60 hours kind of thing is an RPG, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. I, I beat Origins and uh, Odyssey. Oh, nice. You've beat them? Oh. Yeah, no, I've beat them a got through the main story i tried to kill all the cultists and just got to a point where it was just so much grinding and i was just i got over it what do you think of odyssey odyssey i actually quite enjoyed like i'm i'm greek myself so it was good just looking at a bit of the background a bit of the places as well yep um i actually really enjoyed it like i didn't mind origins but i thought odyssey was better a lot of reviews that like the diehard fans didn't really like odyssey that much like it is probably that's why i've been thinking about getting it because the first couple i just didn't fall in love with with assassin's creed it was just too stealthy for me i guess but which which ones like the old ones yeah, yeah, I think I even got the original it was released on. Maybe it was Wii U it came came out. It was one of the first games that got released on Wii U. Assassin's Creed 3. Was that the one? Yeah. yeah. I, I just couldn't dive into that one. Man, Black Flag. I just have to keep going back to it. Like, I'm still playing it. It is a massive game. And, like, I, I want to get 100%. I really finally want to get 100% for a game, and it's just taking forever. I don't, I don't even know how many hours I've done on it. You know, that was where I lost my love for Assassin's Creed with Black Flag. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I beat wow. Assassin's Creed 2, uh, all the Ezio trilogy, back on the yep. PlayStation 3. Uh, I even did assassin's creed 3 as well but when it came down to black flag and they brought out all the ships i could not stand it man but i liked it because you got the game you can play you've got your tablet with you or on your phone and you can do the side quest or not the side quest but the ship upgrades to get more content yeah yep so like you can play the game and smash out a couple hours at night but then during the day why it's supposed to be working you can actually be upgrading a ship or setting ships off to do missions for you so when you get back you got more resources to use so that's why i thought it was really good for the buy-in because you've got at home and out and it still contributes to the same game yeah so that was even like the same with pokemon like you play pokemon go then you get pokemon let's go Pikachu and Eevee. So you yeah, can sort yeah. of play them both together. Yep, I'm with you. So with the um, new Assassin's Creed, it's kind of very similar with you got all the buying stuff in it. brings that sort of formula across. I don't know if you have played the new Assassin's Creed as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I've got it. I loved Origins because I love I love Egypt anyway. And just the massive maps and the pyramids and all. you got all that there. So Odyssey, I haven't played a lot of it. <laughs> because yep. just get to jump back in because I know this goes 100 hours. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's twice the size, I'd say, of Origins, and I thought Origins was big. Yeah, that's right. So you start running in one area and then you just you continue running for 15 minutes. You're like, am I at the end of the map yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, no, All right, nice. Nice. Well, welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And Thank what you. have you guys been doing this week in terms of games? <laughs> so, Steve, <laughs> should you tell them or should I? <laughs> what have you oh. been doing? How did you go with your promise from last week? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, killed it. Uh, got a fair bit done. Um, you'll have to remind me which promise. <laughs> well, that's what I was trying to think. Then I'm like, hang on, a little bit done. Wow. Uh, Zelda, Ocarina of Time. How'd it go? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I moved on from that. <laughs> yeah, moved on. How do you move on? <laughs> Well, I uh, ended up downloading Dauntless, and I bought Divinity Sin 2. So I between... Talking about that. Yeah, yeah, played a bit of um, Dauntless, and I talked about it a little bit, but we held off last podcast, said we'd talk about it a bit more this one. 
because of the cross play and everything like that, we held off. But... What is that game? Oh, easiest way to explain it is Fortnite graphics of Monster Hunter. Okay. It's so is it like an open world thing. Nah, nah. It, well, it's it's sort of got the MMO RPG kind of town base. So everyone's running around in the town and everything like that. But then you select quests that you want to do, and the plane comes and picks you up and drops you off on the island. Yep. So you're hunting like I might say I want to create some lightning gear. So I'll go select go fight the lightning behemoth, and it'll take me out, and I'll uh, get dropped off on an island with three other guys. Uh, anywhere from they can be PC and Xbox or PlayStation. It doesn't matter. It's all crossplay, and <laughs> um, yeah, you can collect some resources as you go while you try to find it one thing i must rant on about everyone should use their flare more because if you get lost you don't know like unless i'm literally a noob and i can't find it but on the hud it doesn't show you where the rest of your team is so okay. if you get if you run off trying to find loot which i quite often do I'll get, I'll just be lost, and then I see on my three, like on the hard on the left, all three of my teammates, their health starts going down, and I'm like, come on, come on, throw up a flare, because it does have, oh, the easiest way at the top, it sort of shows like a little map, and if you set off a flare, it's got a flame, like say, if they're all off to the north, it'll show it behind you, so then you turn, it's like a compass, so yep. then it, it gives you a point to start running to, but a lot of people, they don't use it, they just try to fight on their own and like these behemoth battles they can go for a while like i had one the other day because we we took on probably a bit of a higher level beast than what we should have um, mm-hmm. the, the fight went on for probably 20 minutes 25 minutes okay so yeah and then obviously as you go you cut off tails claws scales stuff like that um it actually gives you extra items. Like, if you just defeat them, you get a certain stock amount of items. But if you actually attack certain body parts until they fall off, it gives you extra items. And that, okay. um, that works towards, like, a, yeah, if I will, an abundance of items. Because like, I'll wear lightning gear if I'm trying to fight. Ooh, what was weak to lightning? I think it was the water behemoth. And then I'll, I'll wear certain, like, fire gear if I'm taking on an earth behemoth earth behemoth and it's the opposite but if i if i'm going to take on an earth behemoth i want to wear uh, whichever one it is say lightning gear but i want to have a fire fl- a sword like you you can mix and match depending on what behemoth you're coming up against uh, and yeah i it's probably i i never dove into monster hunter greatly like i didn't pour like, I've got mates who are still playing Monster Hunter World on PS4, and they're diving into it still to this day. I never did, but it, it, it's definitely a game if you've got a group of mates. Uh, it's, yeah. definitely, it's definitely a game that I could see playing. It's free to play, so, yeah, just you can download it and off you go. I haven't been affected by the pay-to-win side of it yet. Uh, one of my ma- one of my mates quit because he was looking about the pay to win setup. From what I can see, I ranted on about it last week, but a lot of it is cosmetics. And in the PVE kind of world, I don't really care about the pay to win as much. It's more pvp when i suck about it because i don't want to play a game for 100 hours and then someone spends 500 bucks and he can stomp me yeah yeah okay so so in this one it's not it's not too bad truthfully it's i um haven't come across any setups where it's like oh man what the hell's going on there like it's just yeah very grindy it is it is grindy like you just fighting behemoth after behemoth like i can see there is a lot of repetition but like one of the other guys who might be a guest for next week, he's uh, double my level now, and he, he's still playing. He reckons it's um, he's starting to learn which weapons he likes because there's there's swords, maces, uh, like little fire um, knives that are on like chain blades and that kind of stuff. So, and then obviously you've got guns, and the guns aren't as powerful because obviously you can stand back and shoot. Yeah. It's, Definitely poured some hours into that this week. So what you're saying is you chose to play this over <laughs> what's considered one of the greatest games of all time. <laughs> just, just, I was waiting for that one. Completely. Just to spot, just to spot, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was talking so much, I even forgot what my question was. Mind you, halfway through it, I'm like, hang on, 
what did I ask him? I didn't remember asking about Dauntless. No. no. So so you need to apologise to our listeners, mate, that you um, didn't play Zelda. Uh, I just don't understand. Uh, sorry, Mum. Sorry, Mrs. Larman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be about right, too. <laughs> You didn't let me. The main reason why I was supposed to pay play Ocarina of Time was because I was gonna play your other silly Zelda game, but I didn't even play that either. So I should apologise twice. Because it's a hundred years in the future, remember? Like that yeah. was the whole nostalgia. Like, oh wow, and then nothing. Well, <laughs> it just went. <laughs> and now, obviously, with E three coming up this week, I'll be staring at that for a while. So I probably won't even get to play anything else. But yeah, so that's my week is probably. Dauntless a hell of a lot more. I played Divinity Sin a little bit. I streamed a little bit of it on YouTube, but um, really it's probably not a game you'd watch on YouTube. It is, in my opinion, more of a game that you'd play. It doesn't it doesn't really come across very well watching someone else play it. Yep. It's a bit more tone-based in the attack. It's sort of set like Diablo kind of um i don't know you wouldn't call that a side scroller th- 3d platform i don't know what would you call diablo dungeon crawler like, type yeah du- dungeon crawler yeah. like a like a top down view kind of thing it, yeah. it's it's sort of like that it's definitely a beautiful looking game like i got it, it all in high def and it's r-rated you can tell why when people die and everything like that there is a bit of guts and it's very similar to diablo where you got to walk over loot their body stuff like that but it's it's turn base it's not spamming a button it might i think if it was a bit more active attack like gameplay like diablo i probably would dive into it a bit more the turn base is yeah it's slowing it down i think i'm worried that it's probably slowing it down that little bit too much it's good now i've just started getting some teammates so i won't give a proper review on that it, like it, it scored high like you look at all the reviews it's got nines 9.5s all that kind of stuff out of 10 by kotaku ign all that back in the day so it's definitely a um like a top ranked game it's just yeah so just trying to wait and see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, that's about my week. I didn't do any Zeldas, but I did do Dauntless, Divinity Sin 2, and a bit of reading up on E3 coming, but I'll leave that for next section. So you might as well have a chat about your week then, Michael. Mr. Well, I'm going to play Ocarina of Time. <laughs> well, I played Zelda Link to the Past, so I, I just live in the past with that game. I love it. I can't get enough. I don't know how many times I've passed it, but I just I, it's one of those games that you can just keep going back to. Don't know if I've do- found all the secrets yet, but still enjoy the game. Just really good. Uh, but this week what I was playing as well was still Zelda. Link's Adventure as well. I've finally officially retired that game and given up. There is no chance I can pass that game. I don't know. I've used cheats, the cheated version on the Nintendo Switch, and I still struggle. So (laughs) what I decided to do instead was go to lovely YouTube, type in Zelda, my Link's Adventure, and just watch the ending there. I'm like, okay, I feel like I've accomplished something. I am done. Yeah. So it was it was one of those things, mate. Like it was literally about the fourth week I was playing it. I'm like, nah, I've had enough. I can't pass it. I still really enjoy the game, but I just I can't pass a certain part. Big ogre guy, and yeah, just very frustrating. And what else have I been up to, Steve? Um, yeah, well, trying to organise you. I'm still waiting on reviews from last week that you were sending in. Is that to be? Mm. I can't remember what you're talking about. See, that's the thing. So I'm still organising and I pl- I played still the fifth. forgetting. And yeah. <laughs> deny, deny, deny. That's the only way to do it, mate. The only way. But no, so other than that, I had a little bit of Grand Theft Auto Five. Still continuing that storyline. Enjoying that too. Trying to work out the stock market on the game. <laughs> Anything to gamble, mate. So it's in-game gambling. It's even better because then I don't lose my money. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> it's got flashing lights. Anything flashing, I'm sold. <laughs> oh, that's why I think I like some of the retro games, uh, all the bright colours. And, uh, is that Steve typing? No. Yes. Uh, I'm going to break his speakers. 
<laughs> Damn mechanical keyboards, they're as silent as an elephant. <laughs> Don't worry, I must be that boring, you uh, just start typing up. I, it was a perfect time to message the page back. I was like, oh, Michael's on a rant, I should just message the page. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Sorry, you. guys. That's you. Listening. How many keyboards do you go through a week? I oh, know, I've had this bad boy for a while now, actually. What, four days? Huh, nearly a year. All right, cool. Um, what else did we do for the page this week, Steve? Ooh, what else was there? Nah, I didn't do um, much else for the page, actually. We had some no game reviews, done some giveaways. Are you done with your weekly gameplay? Can I rant on about what else we've got? Of course. Well, I might as well kick off game info. So we've talked about some game gaming of the week, but game info, I am pumped for E3. This, I believe it's this week. Square Enix has their um, stall set up. Get the ding ready, because I'm going to be dropping Final Fantasy puns left, right, and centre. I have... <laughs> I can't explain to you how pumped I am for this. I'm pretty sure it was either Sony or Microsoft. I think it was Sony. They pulled out of E3, and Square Enix actually moved their stall, and they took theirs because it was prime time. It was first, first up or like 11 a.m., and that's a, it's a pretty good time to time slot to be in. So they jumped in that. They're from... By understanding, they are hopefully announcing Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, DLC, the new Avengers game looks to be pretty appealing. It's either single play or co-op play. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped for that. I don't want to... Well, actually, yes, later on we might even, if we get time, we'll talk about cancelled games that... Um, we were all looking forward to. I've got a couple. I've got two, probably Final Fantasy 15. Once again, another ding. Uh, <laughs> some of its downloadable content, it got cancelled after I believe they only released two or something as of late, but there was another three to come, but they've stopped that. The main producer actually left Square Enix, so a bit spewing about that one. And then I think the other one was, oh, Star Wars Jedi 1313 or whatever it was. Oh, that one got... Uh, that was obviously a while ago it got cancelled, but that was one that I was super pumped for as well. But, uh, we can rant on about that later on, but that's pretty much my week is all about E3. There's a couple of little games that I dropped, like the Predator game coming up. It, it literally was like a 10-second trailer. It looks, looks pretty cool, but it's got to be done right. There was a game that I can't remember if you guys remember or not. It was called Evolve. It was like, I think it was from memory. Four players, like say us four were, were humans, uh, mercenaries, and then one person on the opposite team was a beast. You had to try to kill the beast and he had to try to wipe out your team. That sort of seems to be what Predator is going down that path. But Evolve wasn't done very well, and if you couldn't line up with this on the servers and everything like that, it was just, yeah, it wasn't worth the worth the time. So I don't know what they're going to do with Predator, if it's going to be a pure online game, sub-base. Okay, so anyway, about your, about this whole thing, i, I got a question, right? I'm, I'm, I was listening, you were rambling, <laughs> I'm thinking, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. hang on. Who the hell is Square Enix? Like, can oh. you give me a second to just Google it? Because I've never even heard of them before. You. They must do some pretty crappy games if, if that was a gaming company. <laughs> oh, you are. Oh, my Lord. You might as well just shut the podcast down now. We're done. <laughs> you're, ki- you're, you're kidding me, aren't you? You don't know who Square Enix is? All I heard was Sony was leaving... E3 and not going to be presenting. I'm like, oh. what a big slap in the face to E3. Oh. Nintendo, they go to E3, but they never normally do anything on E3. They normally do it two weeks after. Yeah. And then some Square enix thing oh. said, oh, yeah, we'll take Sony's place. Okay. Who the oh, hell well, are you? Well, they already obviously had their own store, but they just took the bigger one. But Square Enix... They, they are the creators of some of the best JRPGs of all time. Like, I can't even... Okay, can you list some? Because I've never heard of them. Well, it, it's actually two different companies. It was originally Square, and then there was Enix. It, it was bus back in 2002, 2003. I think it was actually earlier 2000s. 
Square was struggling. They pumped a bit of money into, I hate to say it, Final Fantasy movie, and they the lost first. him in April 1st, 2003. Oh, there you go, 2003. But, um, so I'll stuff up from the start. Okay. No, so what no, happened then? The movie they, because Square was just, it was renowned for their cutscenes as well. Like Enix, I believe, was actually the side that done the Dragon Quest games, and yep. Squ- and Square were the Final Fantasies, uh, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, Secret of Mana, Legend of Mana. Oh, uh, any of them. King Kingdom Hearts. I think actually. Yeah, but- I think they actually done Super Mario RPG by memory. They did. Ah. Whoa. Okay. I've finally heard one game. It was done so many years ago. The main reason why they fell out with Nintendo was because of Final Fantasy VII. They couldn't get the game on the The cartridges cartridges at that point. They actually had a concept game. Apparently, it's out there. I haven't found it. I'd buy it if i could but they had a concept game out there and then they end up moving from nintendo and they went over to sony because sony promised them the disc speeds and the disc sizes so final fantasy 3 was still multiple discs but could you imagine them on the cartridges back then you'd have about seven or eight cartridges in your your 64 so yeah. but yeah back to the main <laughs> brand like it was a merger between them two where obviously final fantasy spirits within the movie they dropped a lot of money on that one. Oh, some some fanboys hate it because they reckon enix ruled them too heavily and they've never been the same since with the merger it was actually square that shut down enix kept going but the name is square enix so is this the spirits within the yes. final fantasy movie yeah 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 Oh, it was... 45% <laughs> from Rotten Tomatoes, mate. 45. I watched it, but, yeah, it was a hard time to watch because everyone... I remember when it came out, like, Square was... They were renowned for their um, cinematics, and they were doing so well with cinematics during games, they just brought out this movie and didn't hit home. It wasn't the best, but, like, they've got other sections of their company, like Square Enix done a takeover deal of... Oh, jeez. I said uh, Edios or something like that, like Square Enix Montreal stuff, like Tomb Raider, Hitman, Deuce X, Thief. Oh, there's more. Yeah, have to still play. haven't heard any of those games, but anyway. Okay, well, look, keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet now because yeah, <laughs> 40, 45%, 6.4 on IMDb. Like, that's fantastic. Bubble. Bubble, bubble, actually, I think I actually remember watching the movie. Can I just add, like, before they merged, like, Enix, not just Square, but Enix, they produced some of my favourite Super Nintendo game titles of all time. Yep. Uh, like, Act Razor. I don't know if you've heard oh. of that one. Kind of, like, build your own world, and then you've got a pretty much a side-scrolling, and you play as the big warrior guy. Uh, I don't know if you played Soul Blazer, or you've heard of uh, Illusion of uh, Time. Yep, yep, yep. Illusion um, of Time, undoubtedly. That's one of my favourite uh, action RPGs on the on the system, and I've also owned uh, Terranigma, which comes oh. after that one. Yep. Um, that was a, a lot of people in the States pretty jealous that they never got that over there, but we did in Europe, or in PAL territories. Yep, yep. Yeah, See, no, James, you might as well stay. Michael, you can piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone, mate. Don't worry. I'm already gone. I'm like, in the room even. If you're RPG, Square Enix, they, uh, they've they had their ups and downs for, for years, but like since, oh, have to be mid-70s, they've been, I think Enix was obviously older than Square, but um, yeah. yeah, it's just been perfect. It's just my dream. So, like, even just rattling off them games, then, like, you forget about them. But, like, Xenogears, Parasite Eve, Secret of Mana, Chrono yeah, Trigger. There must yeah, be I'm, a mute button I can press uh, somewhere. I'm back. <laughs> Look, Chrono Trigger still to this day argues with me. It's between Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII, and probably Breath of Fire 2 as my all-time games i I dive into them three it's probably unhealthy the amount i replay them games (laughs) that's my rant about who square enix is no that was good that was informative i liked it i still don't like them (laughs) (laughs) so moving on (laughs) that's the that's game info of this week i reckon for me um 
releases. There's, yeah, I'll leave them to you guys. I've had my E3 rant. I'll let you have a talk now. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll definitely um, probably interrupt you at some point. That's for certain. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. What was that? No, I'm... Um, uh, yeah, that's it. He just started again. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> gaming releases. We've got some good games coming out. Um, the big ones, I reckon, need to be mentioned. So, Crash Team Racing in June 21st. I reckon that's going to be pretty sick. It is a reboot from the previous version, but there is extra things they can do in the game as well. So, they have enhanced it as well. Uh, there's also Super Mario Maker 2 coming out. Did any of you get part one? Yeah, I got it, like, Day one. Um, <laughs> now I'm scared. This is going to be another <laughs> square thing. No, again. no, like, well, I'm a big Nintendo fanboy, and, like, I thought it was fun. Like, I enjoyed the challenges. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really make my own uh, levels. I played other people's levels, and it got to a point where some people were just making the most ridiculous things that <laughs> I, I just didn't know what to do with it. What about you, Steve? Did you have it, or...? No, no, I played it at a mate's place, and that was, yeah. I, It's sort of the type of, I like playing the Super Mario games. I'm not really into the maker side of things, but no. when it comes to them, like, oh, one of my most hated games of all time is, is Minecraft. Uh, I just, I can't get into making games like that, but uh, not that I'm saying the Mario Maker is that bad. But, uh, I was just saying, when, hang on, we were talking about Mario, we went to Minecraft. Yeah. All right. Well, like, the only thing different, basically, about Part 1 and Part 2 that I've, I've read about is the Super Mario, I'm going to say, World, the third, the one with the cat. I can't uh, think. Yeah, Super uh, Mario uh, 3D World. It came yeah, out on yeah, 3D World, sorry. That's the only difference between Part 1 and Part 2, so you can actually design worlds like that. Basically, you're going to have Mario in a cat suit. And that's it, running a side scroller again. Um, that's the only thing I really saw about it. Here is they also removed uh, online play with your friends. Yeah. And I that's shit. a big I issue shit. with a lot of people. <laughs> Why do you want to play with your friends? I don't, <laughs> know, I don't know where the play on Nintendo because, yeah, they're pretty much one of the main, not the main concepts from the original, that, but a big thing from the original everyone loved was the playing with friends and they've gotten rid of it for some reason. Uh, it, yeah, you don't it's, need friends to play by yourself. It's not a game that I'm actually looking forward to this time. Mario Maker 2, you can cross that one off my list. Well, I just didn't think... I think for the whole online service with Nintendo, it hasn't been done very well. If you need to talk to friends, you have to download an app on the phone. They have made some mistakes with the Switch. But the Switch is good. I do have a Switch and I do enjoy playing the Switch. But you can't talk to your friends unless you use the app. Now you can't have friends and play games. But you can sit and play with someone on the other side of the world that you don't even know. And you can't even talk to to tell them what you're doing. Which, back in the day, I think Nintendo, they actually... Oh, jeez, I can't remember whether it was just something I read on Reddit or it was an official release, but they said they didn't care about their online services greatly because they rathered people being in the same room. Like with the Wii, they were really focusing on the split screens and the four-player controllers and all that kind of stuff. And that was why they were like, oh, if you want to talk to your mates, go right ahead and play, play a different console, but we want you to sit in the same room and play together. That was a, oh, probably a fanboy on Reddit trying to defend them. I don't know whether Nintendo ever really answers to the backlash, but it sort of makes sense when you look at their type of style of gaming. They did come late to the party with that. I remember even on the Wii, they actually released a console with no Wi-Fi, <laughs> no Ethernet port, so you don't connect it to the internet. It was released in Canada. That was the Wii Mini. But, yeah... I don't know. Um, the other game that I was actually quite excited about was Warhammer Chaos Bane. It's actually coming out tomorrow, so I'm so going down to buy it. Um, sort of like a Diablo Warhammer game. Looks pretty cool. Okay. Are um, we doing a giveaway? I think we should, but depending on when I release this podcast. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I release it next week, that's sweet. But no, 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 we definitely should. So we will do one for the Warhammer Chaos Bane. What is yeah, it? Well, Explain it. Is it top down, sort of like Diablo? Yeah, so it's like Diablo. Yeah, 100% like Diablo. You're running around, you're killing things. Looks gory. Looks fine. Okay. Might give me something to do. That's all basically for the news. The game's coming out. Hidden, hidden password for this week, guys Dauntless. 
That is the hidden password for a don't and how do you not spell that, Steve? D-A-U-N-T-L-E-S-S, just like the game. So, oh, guys, write, write that on the um, tagged post at the top of our page for Podcast 3, and, yeah, first person to write it will get a Dodgy Monk sent to We mentioned EB Games having a big sale, so we might do even some giveaways for that. Actually, we did one last week just because they're having such a big sale. We chucked some money out for that one. No, I want to... You can't just stop me. I want to rant on about... (laughs) It's it's like a six-hour episode of um, Star Wars or something. Actually, the ones with Jar Jar Binks, definitely. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I wanted to rant on about NBN or NBN Co or voting in Liberals again, so we probably won't get any money put in for our infrastructure. Also, the biggest news, gaming news for me, other than E3 this week, is PlayStation getting sued by the ACCC. And you wanted that in the episode? I can't believe it. I will leave internet for another day, because obviously oh, that's a little bugbear that I bring up both podcasts so far. But Hang on, this... you talking about the internet? No, 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 we're discussing the internet. I'm looking to buy a house, right? There is no chance in hell I'm buying a house that does not have at least the NBN and fibre to the house, not to the node. It's funny you mention that because one of the, one of my family friends, you could say, I've known him for probably 20, 25 years, when he purchased his house, he told the real estate it has to have NBN. And they, they would ring him a couple of times and be like, oh, we've got this house. And the first time he fell for it, he went out and looked at the house and then he realised and he's like, oh, Where's the NBN? They're like, oh, this one doesn't have NBN yet, but it's coming. Oh. And he and he walked out. He walked out of the showing, and he turned around to the real estate and said, "You will not contact me over a house unless it's installed." And they rung him a couple of times. They're like, "No, no, Telstra's saying it's coming in six months. It's coming in a year. No. Like that would be no. good. It's a real good sale." And he, t- he and he physically turned around and said, "It's either you listen to me or I'll get a new real estate." I will not purchase a house without NBN. And that was it. He, because he is, uh, oh, I, I like to say I'm a gamer. He pours and pours and pours hours into games. So he, he runs a guild on World of Warcraft. If he's not raiding every night, he's organising raids for every second night. Like, he's very active. So for him, NBN was, was a must. And this is So he sounds like, sort of like you with talking. Yeah. yeah, but this is Gladstone, so like with it, without NBN, you might as well have added uh, some cups and a bit of string because that... <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you now where I am in Devon Meadows, it is exactly the same. I'm on ADSL 1, it feels like my 56k modem dialing up. Oh. Like, I'm not even able to get one megabyte upload. I was uh, uploading it... the podcast to YouTube. I did it at 12 o'clock yesterday, and it is 6.46 the next day, p.m., and I'm, what the hell, three minutes remaining, apparently. (laughs) Oh. We're getting there. I actually read the other day that when Energex runs their big towers, like their 132 kV um, towers, they run a big fibre backbone right at the top of it, and they make more money renting that out to the telephone companies than they do with their electrical infrastructure because it's a it's a big fiber backbone like you hit one of them be myself being an electrician if you're ever working out in the bush and you hit one of them backbones oh you better have very good insurance because some of them backbones are running the like banking systems and they can try to they can try to sue you and because they reckon some of them are running a hundred thousand dollars a minute oh wow yeah so when the banks and all that have all this infrastructure, they're willing to pay big money to rent them. And yeah, apparently, once again, it's another. It, just because I read it on the internet means it's true. Um, yeah, of course. But yeah. Google never lies. Doctor Google, right there. But yeah, the Earth is flat. And the moon landing was a hoax. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think but just... That's that's my internet. But I have to go on on top for that. The PSN getting sued by ACCC, mostly because this affected me personally. I don't know whether you guys read this, but what it is, it's over their refund policy. It used to be a bit different from what someone said on our Facebook page. But what it is, if you download a game 
on PSN, if you haven't played the game, you can return it within seven days or 14 days. But if you've played the game, it has to be broken or irreplayable for them to give you a return. But to be broken or unplayable, they have to have been advised by the developer. So me and all my mates, we're playing Call of Duty. We got one, I won't say the exact word I want to call him because it's a podcast. We're trying to keep it PG. But he says, why don't we all download PUBG? We'll play some PUBG. So we're like, yeah, yeah, sweet. We downloaded it. This game was atrocious. Like when it first came onto PlayStation, it was a beta at best. It was so glitchy. You couldn't pick up guns. You'd pick up a gun and keep running. And then all of a sudden, the gun was back on the ground, ten meters behind you. Like it was, it was terrible. Like we all played it for probably ha- half an hour because we were like, it's okay. It'll, it, it's okay. Like the Simpsons episode of the pig flying through the mud and the water. That was literally, uh, uh, that's another good Simpsons. I pretty much, if you can't reference every life out of Simpsons or Seinfeld, then you've got to get a better life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and so we all asked for refunds. Sony blatantly, boom, wouldn't do it. Nah, you've played the game, no refund. And I'm used to EB Games. This is why I like EB Games, the seven-day return. Because if you buy a game, I don't trust reviewers, and that's why I personally, when I do reviews for our website, don't give a scored rating because what I like doesn't mean Michael likes or James likes or anyone likes. So I just give it my own opinion. Um, so just a note for our um, website viewers, um, Stephen's currently in a sympathetical. <laughs> with reviews, we're still waiting. Well, yeah, we've got a couple coming, but they'll be unscored. So you'll. <laughs> It'll be unscored, mate. <laughs> but <laughs> um, they wouldn't give us refunds, so you had to lodge a complaint about why you deserved a refund. So I lodged mine, and Mister Sony finally, after about ten days, gives me a call and says, "Why are you carrying on so badly?" And I said, "This game was unplayable." And he said, well, did the game start? I said, yeah, yeah, of course it started. I said, but it was mis, uh, misleading. I said, because under what it shows, the game is actually playable. He said, no, nah, no, nah, developers haven't advised us of anything, blah, blah, blah. So you, we're not going to award you with a thing. He goes, have you How uninstalled? Game? Oh, it's 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Why are we fighting over 30 or 40 bucks? Well, I spend that on at Macca's drive through I know, but it's more, it's more <laughs> the... Um, like it's just to stand up against these developers. Like you shouldn't up. be. I'm, standing you sh- up. I'm sitting down next to the drive-through window. I know. What would you like, sir? Oh, and then they get it freaking wrong, and I have to drive back. <laughs> but at least I get something yeah. from it. They gave me oh. the game. Okay, it's crap. Um, I asked for Kentucky fried, on. Kentucky fried chicken, not Kentucky fried quail. You. <laughs> uh, uh, now you got me carrying on about fast food. <laughs> uh, but and but for thirty or forty dollars, I would have rather spend that on some Switch games. Like there's plenty of games out there. Like you shouldn't be charged for a beta. That's what I believe. You shouldn't be charged for a beta. And this was a beta at best. And yeah, and he upset me so much. I was like, oh well, st- uh, exactly that. Oh, thirty thirty dollars. <laughs> I'm going to backers. <laughs> but like I've got other friends who. They have to trade games in to buy games. They, they're they not as... I Like, I wouldn't call myself well off, but I've got myself in life where I can turn around and you just mentioned Warhammer tomorrow. I'm going to go and buy Warhammer tomorrow. Like, I am in a situation where I can do that. But I've got friends who, who can't. They have to trade in games to go and buy some. So if they spend their $30, $40, that's a month's worth of their savings, they are stuffed. They can't get another game for another month, and they're stuck with this game that's unplayable. So it's it, it shouldn't be, ah, oh, it's only $30, move on, because that's the consumerism at, at its worst. Like That's these big conglomerates who just are taking over everything, saying, oh, well. I've got a question for you. How many games do you have? How many games do I have? Yeah. Oh, I've got a fair few. Yeah, that's consumerism. Move on. <laughs> oh, but that's but how many games do I believe I should get a refund on? 
Like I, yeah. if I bought Super Mario Maker and I didn't like it, that's a difference because it's just me not liking that genre or type of game. Like Divinity Sin, I bought it. Will I ever actually play it again? Probably not. But I bought it, and it it's good for the genre it's in. But mm. this this game was physically un, and they Sony's answer was wait, they will patch the games and it will be playable soon. That was it. That's, that's not good enough. No, no. And so my mate, we all bought it off the Sony um, PSN store, so we were like, oh, stuff used. But one mate lodged it with the ACCC, and the other mate, actually, he bought it through BPay. So he messaged BPay and, and got a refund. This is where the sticky bit comes from. PSN have then turned around and suspended his account. And he said, what the hell's going on? They finally rung him and said, you um, broke our rules. You did did not go through us for the exchange, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, you guys wouldn't give me a refund because he'd done exactly what I'd done, but they still still refused it. So then they suspended his account. But I don't know whether you guys know, but when your account is suspended, you can't play any of your digital games. Okay. So See, they I don't normally have, have many digital games though. I like the hard copy, so I've got it in my well, hands. I'm yeah, def- I'm, not- I'm definitely the same. I I'm but and this is I'm still waiting for him to get back to me. I believe if you've got the physical game downloaded onto your console, you can still play it. It's only if you've uninstalled it and it's sitting in the cloud you can't reinstall it. I mm. believe that's what he meant. But or you can't play the online services, obviously, because they won't let you online. But yeah. he he plays a lot of digital games, and being the older PS4, the hard drives weren't that big, so he actually has to uninstall a lot of his digital games. So he couldn't get any of them back until it took weeks. He ended up getting PSN's actual bank account, had to transfer money into the bank account, wait for it to clear before they would reactivate his account. So he was without PSN access. So we were playing Call of Duty every night. Um, he couldn't play for close to a month before it got sorted. Jesus. All because right. PlayStation turned around and said, because they trade out of PSN, I believe, Europe, and their trader um, uh, law, consumer law, is different than Australia. So they turned around and said, no, no, we trade under... And uh, where we are a European based company, so we trade off of their laws. But a lot of Australians are like, nah, this, this Australia, mate, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to build a wall, make Australia great again. Uh, <laughs> oh, there goes the other listeners. <laughs> and, but, and, and, but like, and that's what they were carrying. They were like, oh, this is Australia's law. Like, and it is true, like, you sh- shouldn't be affected by, otherwise Chinese companies are going to start coming in with their laws. They, they've got no copyright laws as long as it's reproduced in China. And like, well, you have to draw a line in the sand at some point because then all of a sudden you're opening up for all the tax evasions and, like, the amount of money that we're pulling back in, like, we're missing out on it. And it keeps carrying on and carrying on, but that's a but fun... That's, a much, that's, a, that's also a much bigger topic because oh. we can't tell these multinationals as well. We go, hey, you've come into Australia, mate, you got to do it our way. Well, because then they'll just say, okay, stop your Australia, we'll go elsewhere. Well, you half can, and that's exactly what the Australian consumer is doing. Like, look at... I can't remember what the exact um, figure was, but they said gaming industry in australia was 2.2 billion dollars or something last year and that's That's, probably a day in china though well it it is but that who wants to say (laughs) who wants to say no to 2.2 billion dollars over a refund of a 30 dollar game so that's the thing they have to play ball uh, eventually because they lose more money than they win because instantly out of all four of them of us who played on the psn two of them have vowed they're not getting the PS5. They're going over to Xbox. The better console. But, uh, it comes out of the end, mate. The but, better console. That's all we're going to say. But a couple Just, of, <laughs> but a couple of uh, months later, now because of how many complaints have been lodged to the ACCC, ACCC are taking them to the High Court. They're going to the Ombudsman and saying, 
hey, you are actually wrong. You are breaching Australian law. You have to start giving refunds. And so it's going to be an interesting thing because I don't see Sony pulling out of Australia because of it. It's just a loophole that I understand it's a double-edged sword myself. I've bought yeah. a game. I've bought a game from EB Games before, played it for less than seven days. I played it for six and a half days, finished it, and then I took it back for a refund. Yeah, see, that's wrong too. I feel dirty because being a gamer, I don't believe in that because that gaming developer missed out on my money. And yeah. it was it was a game where I played enough that they deserved it. It was just me being a tight beep. Uh, okay. So and can I, I ask you a question, though, about that whatever game it was? Yeah, yep. Have you since bought it? No, I... I actually was a bit disappointed. It was Fire Emblems, but it was the one what came out on the Switch and it was actually like a Dynasty Warriors, like a hack and slash. Yeah. Oh, I'm playing High World Warriors. I love those games. Well, I, I don't. I pl- And that's the, that's the thing. I can play them for six and a half days before I get truly bored and I'll never play them again. I thought it was going to be a tactical game like all the other Fire Emblems. That was why I was so keen to get, get home with it. So... Well, I believe it's not their fault. It was probably mine by not doing any more research. That is an opening that's there. So I do understand why Sony is being a bit hesitant with allowing it. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I've only once returned one game to EB Games uh, after like probably three days, but that's because I it wasn't for me. It was the original Destiny when it first came out, and there was not enough content in there for me. It got so repetitive real yep. quickly i uh, took it back for the latest fifa yeah oh my god went from worse to worse oh <laughs> my god <laughs> if there's nothing worse than sports clearly i'm very athletic you, you yeah. go get a sports game like <laughs> i um uh, i Couldn't find do. the sports genre that's it. We're going to have a rant about that next podcast. <laughs> Please, next podcast, mate. Please. Oh. Well, I, I'm a sports guy. I oh. do a lot of contact sports in real life. Um, I'm, at, I'm I feeling can't. sick at the moment, so I don't think I'll be there. Yeah, it's going to be a sports I, rage. We'll have a rant about sports games next. But, yeah, exactly that. Like, I've I've returned games if I truly believe the, the game creator has lied to me. If I like uh whatever arc stuff like that like if they haven't released enough content and it's truly a a poor game um i i've but upon saying that in all of my time i've probably returned maybe two or three all the rest i suck a bag of things and i keep the games and i just play them and just keep on going so i yeah it's not i don't see sony losing Fists full of money because of adjusting to Australia's law. Yeah. And I've I never returned a game. Thanks for asking, Steve. But, um, yeah, no, uh, well, I wasn't really caring because you don't know who Square Enix is. So <laughs> I would have returned that game. Is, is that a game? Uh, I, oh, no, that's your, a developer, isn't it? Oops, to you. Your parents should have returned you. <laughs> <laughs> See how aggressive we get? It's supposed to be a family podcast, mate. <laughs> Uh, but no. yeah, that's my rant. anyway i'm cutting this off now so thank you so much james, for coming hope <laughs> yes, to see you again with us <laughs> yes thank you james thank you thanks for having me on it's been a pleasure hopefully i didn't rant too much for you mate <laughs> no you're all good i actually learned something too oh see how, so, i'll teach you how to edit so you don't have steve through the whole podcast yeah no just can you voice capture that i'll play that to myself learn something there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh this, this is going to be your editors it is going yeah, to yeah. help you no no i just like to thank all the listeners um also just would like to finish up by saying guys it will never be game over yep game has got a game and i'll go another <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and make sure you jump over, jump on our website, Facebook pages, all that kind of stuff. Sub to the podcast, and hopefully, tune in next week to hear me rant and Michael talk uh, terrible, terrible stuff. And James, obviously, welcome aboard. Thanks, guys. <laughs>